This week on Dance of Joy, we talk about paint thinner, part-time jobs, and Sam and Victor's day off. All that and more as we watch Season 7, Episode 4 of our favorite 80s hit sitcom, Perfect Strangers. Hello and welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. Thank you for pressing play. My name is Cousin Brother Imran. Joining me every week, Cousin Sister Sophia. What's up, Cousin Brother Imran? She's my sister, brother, not my cousin. cousin. Let's just clear that up. Brother Cousin Imran, yes. I don't know what these titles mean anymore. People are going to think we have a very strange family, but no. It's well, we not do. That. Well, yeah, but, but not, not that, that strange. strange. <laughs> not me post strange. What are we you talking know, about? We have been doing this podcast for a while now. It's not really paying my bills, actually. So I think I need to get a part-time job. Oh, you tried uh, selling knives door-to-door? I hear that's a wonderful way. No, you sell them on eBay now. Oh, passive income. Passive income. It's all about the hustle. I might become an influencer or, um, I don't know, sell feet pictures. No, no. Here's the thing. You, You make a program saying, I made all this money with this program. And then what do you do? You sell a masterclass the program of the the thing that never really happened. Yes. That that actually exists. There are people, there are ebooks on how to write ebooks and coaching programs about how to start a coaching program. Don't fall for like the drop shipping seminar scheme because none of those people have actually. I'm trying to get rich. Yeah. I I, need a scheme. Well, the the cousins are trying to get rich too. We may have a scheme for you here. Let's see. Okay, let's see. This week's episode, we are at season seven, episode four of Perfect Strangers. This one titled Door to Door. Door to Door, Door capital T, no hyphens. No, it's physical action of door to door. Yeah. What does that sound like? I don't know. Well, if you were to have checked the television guide, the TV guide. (laughs) The television guide. (laughs) Back then, uh, you would have read about this episode. Part-time cleaning product salesmen Larry and Balky are eager to try their spiel on a rich client. Oh, there's a spiel, is there? A good I love spiel. A, I love a good spiel. Who doesn't love a good spiel? I'm spieling every day. <laughs> uh, this cast, b- very small cast this week, just our dynamic duo, Bronson Pinchot's Balky, Marklin Baker as Larry, and one guest cast that comes in in the second what? half. What? They just That's moved it. into this big house with their ladies. If you're thinking about what the girls Where are doing. Where are their respective roommates you're and not, wives? You're not going to find out this week. Not in this they're episode. They're just absent. Maybe they're on a flight somewhere, but it's never See, mentioned. It's, it's convenient explained. that they're flight attendants because you're just like, yeah, they're on a flight. They're on a flight. They're on a flight. Yeah. Okay, this episode aired October 11, 1991, almost to my... We're getting to little Sophia's birthday. birthday. Oh my God, you're going to be 12 in 1991. That's wild. Ugh, Man. I'm so old. Wow. Wow. And of course, Perfect Stranger is streaming for a small fee on Amazon Prime. Still hasn't popped up on any of the free or resources or, or the uh, included streaming packages. Fingers crossed. Everyone keep putting the vibe out there for free perfect strangers. It'll be back. It'll be back it'll somewhere. It'll show up somewhere. We'll be done by then. I maybe. believe it. I believe it. <laughs> okay. Let's get into this uh, door-to-door act one. Uh, we start in, uh, not in the apartment. Oh my god! But- Remember how you're used to seeing the exterior of the apartment and or the chronicle, but the apartment when the apartment, sh- yeah. Not anymore. Now, what are we looking at? The external a of giant this giant castle. house, this, castle house this that is they bought somebody's somehow. castle. And then it cuts inside the living room, and there's furniture. Last time we yep. saw, it was empty. Just bought, they're they're all moved in. So real quick, there's a this appears to be all new furniture: a new striped couch, a new coffee table. There's some shelves in the back. There's some plants. There's a coat hanger. Yeah. Uh, uh they must have really splurged. Yeah, went all in. There's a rug. Right. And not only that, there's a balky sitting there. On, in the sofa in the middle of this big living and room. what else is there? And all around him on the sofa and the floor are like uh, just a pile of huge teddy bears Giant matching. teddy bears. And he's sitting there stuffing one, an empty one, he's putting the stuffing. He's got a bag of cotton yeah. next to him. Um, And so that's what he's doing. And what is he doing? It turns out that he wanted to 
get Mama a very special birthday gift this year, but he didn't have the money to afford it, so he took on a part-time job as a bear stuffer. He's a bear stuffer, and we find this out because Larry runs in with, yeah. he's like, Balky, I got great news, yep. and then he just looks at it and goes, what is happening here? Yeah. And Balky explains that this is his bear stuffing jamboree. Okay, interesting. <laughs> He's like, it's fun, it's wacky, but it's not as easy as it looks. You have to pay attention every second. For instance, one of these bears has half of my Snickers bar. (laughs) Silly. It's such a silly, like, opening. I didn't do much for me. There wasn't any great jokes. Don't these people have jobs? What are they doing? Well. So half a Snickers bar is in a thing, and uh, Larry goes, uh, Balky, and Larry, and then Balky goes, I know, it's hard work. But it's worth it knowing I'm bringing joy to the little children. And Larry's just like, all right, Balky, forget about bringing joy to the little children. He's <laughs> oh, just Larry. mean. And he He's- jumps over the couch like Balky usually does. This yeah. time, Larry's doing it. He's super excited. He's very excited because he has found the two of them a part-time job that he says is going to make them rich. Oh, yippee. And you know how he gets excited when he's about to be rich or when he thinks he is. So he explains that earlier that day, he had interviewed a man named L. Bob Frederick, which to me sounds a lot like L. Ron Hubbard. Yes. Anyway, L. Bob Frederick. Who is this guy? He's president and CEO of a company called Clean for Life. And Balky says, get out of the city. He goes, I know who that is. He was on the cover of Cheese Whiz magazine. Well, he says Cheese Whiz magazine. Magazine. And then Larry goes, not Cheese Whiz magazine. Biz Whiz Magazine. As he also says, Cheese Whiz the Biz Whiz Magazine. And Larry tells him that L. Bob told him that he is the salesman who can sell their clear for life home hygiene system. They have told him he is the perfect salesman. And he says, Balky, you're not going to believe this. It's a miracle. Okay, so how does Larry, an investigative reporter, not already know that this is some scheme? I imagine he went to some like scheme. seminar in the banquet hall of a hotel, and they, they he's an investigative reporter. They just like massaged his ego and complimented him and got him to be so a easy. sucker and Such buy an a mark. bunch of cleaning products. In fact, that's why he jumps out and he runs out the door. And, and he bounce. carts in these boxes of there's cleaning a, products. Yes, there's just cardboard boxes on a hand truck. And Bucky tells his bears, you're, you're going to have to stuff yourself for a while. <laughs> uh, so he, they're both standing next to the thing. And Larry's like, this stuff puts the lean and clean. And he hits the top of the box. He goes, this puts the spark and sparkle. And he hits the top of the box. And Bucky goes, does it put the hiney and shiny? Uh-huh. And it hits the top of the box. Ha uh-huh. They went for the hiney joke. A little uh, medium laugh. Uh, <laughs> and Larry's just like, yep. <laughs> and so he pulls out this bottle. It's like a plastic bottle with blue. Blue liquid, liquid and a label. Inside and a very rudimentary label. And he tells Balky that... Um, well, he gives it to uh, Balky, and Balky just holds it. He goes, Gusset, this miracle looks awful like a bottle of soap, which is exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a bottle of soap. Larry says, Balky, you have no vision. And Balky says, well, I did have pink eye once, but <laughs> I think it's all clear. Oh, pink up. eye is horrible. And he says, okay, you might be you might be seeing a bottle of soap, but when I look at this bottle of soap, I see cars, yachts, beach houses. <laughs> and then Balky just is staring really intently at the bottle and goes, oh, I don't see any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes the bottle and he holds it up close to his face as, as Larry runs out again to get something else. Uh, and he, this time he comes in. It was like a big power floor mop cleaner, cleaner like, thing. It looks with like a, a waxer, but like a power cleaner. Yeah, big power round washer. base that looks heavy. There's a big like white tank attached to it. Yeah. So he tells Balky that like the product in those bottles combined with this marvel of technology. What is it <laughs> called? The Omni Sweep. The Omni Sweep. I think they could have given it like a number after that, like the Omni Sweep 4000. Yeah, like they did with other things. Yeah. Uh, the Omni Sweep will revolutionize the way we think of dirt. No. And Balky gets all pe- uh, like nostalgic. Because you know when I think of dirt, I think of the floor in Mama's kitchen, <laughs> dirt floor in the kitchen. That's that's fun. And he goes hard packed, and you can eat an omelet off it. I like this detail. His kitchen was just a dirt hard packed floor that was super smooth. Yeah. And then he's like, "Oh wait, 
Let's go back to your incredible vision. Can you tell me which of the bears has my Snickers in it? <laughs> he points if to his bears. vision is so incredible. He, yeah. And Larry's like, Balky, your beer stuffing days are over. He tells him he's going to take him into this part time business with him. Uh, and Balky goes, you mean we're going to be partners? And then Larry's like, well, 60, 40, but partners for sure. And Bucky's like, oh, cousin, you're too kind. You, you take, take the, the 60. 60. <laughs> and Larry's just like, well, if it'll make you happy. <laughs> I think Larry had already decided so how that split was going to happen. So we go to the next scene. And again, we have the outside establishing shot. But this time there's a caption over it that says specifically, very specific, Saturday morning. I, I'm not, And I don't understand why they have to point out that it's Saturday morning. Maybe because it's not <laughs> during their nine to five work, yeah. and they're doing this. But also because it said Saturday morning, my brain fixed on once we cut to the inside, they're both like dressed larry's in a tie oh, larry's he's always all, wearing a tie but wouldn't, Balky's yeah. all dressed up and it's like <laughs> he's got a vest it's saturday morning relax guys yes, but they got like, soap to sell so i he's know but get it, dressed up they're just talking about it at this point but yeah saturday morning they're already all dressed up and i'm like this this point i'm not i'm like do they still work at the chronicle what is happening yeah why we find out that they do later but yeah. like it's very confusing yeah uh so now we got to get to the scene where larry has to larry explain about selling Oh, yeah, because he, he knows everything from whatever right? seminar he went to. He said, for, it's funny because he goes, all right, Balky, before we start making huge sums of money, we got to go over the finer points of selling. And Balky goes, sure, cousin, what would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's such a good answer. I'm going to use that sometimes. And then we got a great, something we haven't heard in a while, Larry going, Balky, 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 You know what follows this. Larry says, I already know everything there is to know about selling. Oh, everything. Why? Because he stayed up all night reading the clean for life handbook and he holds up this book and you can I, see the title. And he reads title. it. And he goes, it's called knock, knock. I'm there. Knock, knock. I'm there. <laughs> A guide to door to door selling by, by L. L. Bob, Bob Frederick. Frederick. I love the title of this book. It's kind of funny. Knock, knock. knock, knock. I'm, I'm there. there. It's me. <laughs> uh, and so Balky's. Starts to take the goes to take the book from Larry and Larry pulls it away. No, from no, no, him. No, no, He's no, like, no, you're no, not no. ready for the book. <laughs> and Bell, he's like, I want to read the book. In fact, he goes, L. Bob gave explicit instructions not to let you see the book. So there's a whole bit where he won't really let him read the book. I don't yeah. know why he's being so mean. It's, I don't know why. He needs to hoard the information. Or he needs to control. Yeah. Yes. He and he said. L. Bob said that it contains mind control information, which in the wrong hands could be dangerous. Also, a weird what? line. I, yeah, it's a weird line. So I didn't weird. understand why they put that in there. Mind control, because Larry's in this cult pyramid scheme now. Anyway. Yeah. So Larry says, I will tell you everything you need to know to Balky. And he says, Balky, there's two basic rules to selling. And uh, he holds up. Uh, he he holds up one finger. He goes, and Balky holds up one finger at the yes. same time. And he goes, get your foot in the door. Right. That's one. They both are holding up one finger. And then he, and then Larry goes, and get the money, get the money, get the money. And he count, he holds up only a only, second finger. Yes. He's counting. And Balky, course, Balky counted has, each one yes. of those as one. And four so, fingers. So, he goes, so they're Clawson. standing next to each other. Balky's got <laughs> four, four up and Larry's got two up. Like, and there seems to be four rules. However, I'm not allowed to read the book. Oh, oh no, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then Larry goes, look, you don't need to read the book. All you need to know is what's on this little card. He was holding up the book before. There he was a pink little like card pink with writing on card. it. He doesn't actually give it to him. He teases him because Balky's like, yeah. wait, El Bob said I could read that card. Did he actually use my name? And Larry's like, yes. He and, said Balky should read this card. And then, But he uh, still pulls it away yeah, from and So he reaches for the card. He pulls it away. He gets up. And Larry's like, this is so dumb. He goes, now, they're standing up now. He goes, now, I think it would be helpful. We did a little practice run. So they're both standing right in the middle of this living room and Balky suddenly runs around the sofa, runs up half the stairs, runs down the half, comes around the other side. Get it? A practice run, which is so like the, suddenly, okay, we're in season seven. He's They've so moved in. Suddenly he's literal. like, uh, he's like a uh, foreign bumpkin he's again. fresh off the goat. Fresh Balky. off the goat again after six years in America, seven years. So I think like I've said this before, but for, I think for the rest of these, they're going to really just, at their advantage, make him dumb when they need him to be dumb and very savvy when they need him to be very savvy. Yeah, it's kind of annoying and frustrating, but we'll see here Ugh. that he regresses quite a bit. Yeah. To like, you know, to the point where you're like, come on, what, what are you doing? He's not that 
he didn't just get here. What is that? Yeah, you've definitely heard the phrase practice run before. (laughs) So he runs around, he stands there with his hand open, and the Larry just goes, Good. Good. (laughs) And so they're going to do a little um, role playing, and he wants Balky to be the salesman, and Larry will be the customer. And they together they go to the front door. And, um, and then Buck is like, uh, Cousin L. Bob really said my name. How did he say it when he said it? He still can't get over it. But he sends him outside. He gives yeah. him the card. And then he closes the door and waits. Yeah. And nothing happens. No. And he's standing there waiting. It's kind of funny. And then finally Larry goes, Valky. And then you just hear, Yeah. <laughs> he goes, and Larry knock. goes, Knock. Valky <laughs> goes, What? Larry and goes, goes knock, 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 knock. And, then, and then he <laughs> opens. Valky comes in the door and he goes, "Who's there?" <laughs> so silly. I saw that coming. Uh, uh, that was funny. There's light applause from the audience, and I was like, "Who are you clapping at?" So I guess it's kind of fun. And Larry pushes him back outside, slams the door shut. This time, Valky knocks on the door, and and Larry goes to open it, but before he can <laughs> open it, Valky just walks through, throws the door open, hits Larry, and right hits in Larry in the nose. Doink. Boy, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, and I love so this a little bit he, of physical comedy yeah, here. He does the thing where he's checking his nose if there's blood. You know, how oh, you're yeah. like, uh, is there something blood? No, and okay. uh, and he just gives him a look. Balky <laughs> runs back Balky outside. Comes back outside. Like, Oops. <laughs> and he cl- and then this time he rings the doorbell. Yes. And Larry opens the door. Balky comes in. Uh, <laughs> he comes in right up to him and just smiles at him, and he like fiddles with his like eye. straightens his he's shirt. He's just like, well, uh, hi. and Larry's like, read, read the, the card. card. <laughs> So then he holds up this card in front of his face and he starts just reading out very slow gibberish. He's like, Emo, And then Larry just looks at him and calmly, like annoyed but calmly, takes the card out of his hands, turns it upside down. So he was presumably reading backward Are and you, upside down, I, like I, such a stupid guy. You might understand that he did not, who went to night school and graduated, did not yeah. recognize English letters that were upside, upside down. down and backward. Yeah. What is happening? Anyway, so who he turns wrote it upside this down. Episode? It was, it's and like I knew, all the jokes I also, when he started, I was like, it's going to be upside down. And uh, as soon as you he can kind that, of see it. Yeah. Yeah. And then after he turns it right side up, Bucky goes, can I interest you in a revolutionary way to clean your home? Larry goes, no. And Bucky goes, okay, bye. And he <laughs> and turns, he and leave. turns and leaves. Larry's like, no, no, where you go? And Le- Bucky is like, I'm going to go back to bear stuffing because I stink at selling. <laughs> I stink at selling. And Larry's like, oh, le- I got to explain this to him. So you pull, they they go um, back to the couch. They sit down and he's like, all right. Now, here's some great uh, Larry explaining. <laughs> yes. So he starts with Larry's reading. He says, when I said no, you thought I meant no. Yes. Belky goes, yes. Larry says, no. You see, a good salesman, to a good salesman, no means yes. You understand? Yes. And no, Belky says. And he says, okay, cousin, when you say no. And Larry says, yes. Do you mean yes? Larry says, no. <laughs> but but then why? why? Why when you say no, you don't mean yes? No, I mean no. No, see, when a customer says no, they mean yes. When I say no, I mean no. Buggy's still like, let me try to put this together. When you're being the customer, no means yes. Yes. When you're being Cousin Larry, no means no. Yes. When you look at a bottle of soap, you see a yacht. Yes. <laughs> and then Buggy's just overwhelmed and starts sobbing. He just starts crying because he doesn't get any of this. And Larry's like, okay, you're definitely yes. not ready to read the book. <laughs> oh, boy. It's all about, about the book. Um, and Balky's like, no, 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 I'm fine. Uh, by the time we go once around the neighborhood, I'll get the hang of it. This door to door thing. Right. Because now we're imagining they're going to go door to door and try to sell bottles. So that's and not the Larry's point. like, nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> and he says, um, no. And I mean, no. Balky goes, no. He goes, no. And I mean, no. <laughs> and then he explains he's already got this scheme in his head. Oh, he's got so this he's all worked out. Te- in their neighborhood, they could go to a thousand doors and make one sale. And he says, a good salesman goes to one door and makes a thousand sales. Okay. We are going to sell this product to Lenora Dumont. Lenora Dumont, Balky says. Lenora Dumont, yes. Never heard of her, <laughs> Balky says. And Larry says, I interviewed her last month. She owns the Dumont chain of hotels. Well, she's like a Hilton or something. She's a hotel magnate. Hotelier. Yes. Yes, like a Hilton. 
Uh, that's all we know about her. And we don't know why he, oh, we find out later, but okay. He interviewed her. She owns a bunch of hotels. She's rich, presumably. And he says, we're going to make her the queen of clean. We're about to make salesman history. Are you with me? And Balky uh, nods his head yes and says no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Very confusing. And then it fades to black. That is the end of Act One. Listener, join this conversation. Join our Facebook group. It's lots of fun. I post threads of the episodes we're going to record ahead of time. You can leave your comments, your observations, your questions. We will share them in the show. You can meet other listeners and other fans of Perfect Strangers. We'll be there forever, always. Can we just go back for a second and recap what happened in Act One? Like, So their plan is to sell a bunch of cleaning products to, to one rich lady who owns one a bunch rich of hotels. Lady who Larry knows about because he interviewed her for his, his job in the main Chronicle. job, Isn't his that, primary yeah. Isn't job. That conflict of interest, a little bit. He's, First of all, <laughs> even at this point, before before even watching the rest, I was like, "Is that a good? Well, who does that? Who? Why would you mix your part time gig with your full time career? And like, if you have all these contacts for, as a journalist, and like, how's that going to make you look if you show up to them?" <laughs> You know, imagine like interviewing like Michael Jordan or something and then going back to be like, hey, you want to buy you want to buy some, some uh, timeshare cookies <laughs> or something. You don't think uh, your boss is going to hear about this exactly. after like your reporter showed up. And then second of all, why would you think uh, this lady would uh, have any decisions made about cleaning products in the hotel? Wouldn't you go to like the head of. Uh, maintenance, maintenance or, whatever, or yeah. the other another office person no, who's in charge of obviously she's the she's the rich woman but she runs all the operations she herself buys the soap you know what i mean she buys the soap and all the linens and I everything personally so. sure okay let's see what happens we don't at this point we don't know anything much more about her or what this plan anyway okay so act two starts and now we're at a different big house, a much bigger house. It looks like a rich, like it looks like in the early nineties, what they would, they, what the TV people would think a stereotypical, like rich person mansion mansion looks like it's, you know, it's like a living room with rich well, looking this stuff. This one is around. more like a castle with like a big yeah. drive in yeah. uh driveway with a bunch of limbos and nice cars outside. Very dynasty or something. And we'll, yeah, and so then we go to the interior of the living room, nice stuff in there, and um, Larry's like, Balky, get in here, and Balky comes riding in on the Omni Sweep like it was a horse, and he's singing the Lone Ranger. <laughs> <theme song>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the William Tell over and, like, and he gets off of it, and he's like, hi-ho, Omni Sweep. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a hi-ho silver. Yeah. And then there's another Long Ranger reference as he goes, all right, Balky, Balky, this is not fun and games. And he goes, whatever you say, Kimosabe, which yeah. is what uh, Tanto called. Uh, right. Uh, lots of long, random Lone Ranger references yeah. as he rides his, the, Omni, the sweep. Omni sweep into the room. And so he tells Balky when Mrs. Dumont uh, gets there, let him let Larry do all the talking. And he says, you just remember rule number two. And he holds up two fingers. <laughs> and then they do that same parallel like different fingers counting. He goes, get, get the, the money, money, get the money, get the money. And again, Balky has it as four and Larry has it as two. And uh, he says, cousin, I still think that that's rules two through four. Maybe <laughs> it's explained in the book. However, I'm not allowed to see the book. Oh, oh, no, no, oh no, 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 no. So then Mrs. Dumont walks in, a lovely middle-aged woman in a like nice a business suit, business suit, a skirt obviously. Suit, yeah. And this room has, there's like a nice sofa. There's a coffee table with a whole tea set and tray with foods. It's very mm -hmm. lavish. And, and she says, good afternoon. And Larry says, good afternoon, Mrs. Dumont. You're looking well. And she goes, thank you. Who are you? <laughs> she clearly does not know what's going on. And Larry tries to remind her, I'm Larry Appleton from the Chronicle. Remember? And she, she, uh, she just says nothing. Blankly. She goes, I, inter I interviewed last month. He goes, four columns, nice pictures. We had lunch on your terrace, cold salmon, asparagus with dill sauce. Oh, and you showed me uh, pictures of little Malcolm in Sicily. And she's just like, no. <laughs> she <laughs> says no. And then Belky's like, cousin Larry spilled gazpacho on your lap. And she goes, she says, now oh, I remember. Now I remember. <laughs> and Larry's like, I'm still so, I'm terribly sorry. Did you get my flowers? She's like, yes, I gave them straight to the maid. Oh. <laughs> she's that type of person. Then she remembers and says that, oh, you wrote a very nice article about my art collection. So she has an art collection too. And Larry says, Oh, thank you. And she says, Are you here to do a follow up piece? 
are you interested in my Monet? And Balky says, yes, we're here to get the Monet, get the Monet, get the Monet. Right. That's actually right. kind of funny. That yeah. They brought the money and the Monet in the yeah. art. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, he introduces Balky, and Balky, of course, walks up to Mrs. Dumont and hugs her and, like, gives her a kiss on the cheek, and Larry's freaking out. He pulls Balky away. He gets, you'll have to excuse him. He's from a very small island with a defective oh gene pool. Oh, my God. Pool. So rude. Lots of insulting. So rude. And then she says, here's the real story. I'm having my portrait painted by Ronaldo Ricardo. Ricardo. He sounds like a soccer player. It does sound like a soccer player. <laughs> and it sounds like somebody else, because Larry tries to act like he knows what she's talking about she go he goes did you hear that balky ronaldo ricardo and balky goes ronaldo ricardo i love him why would he never let lucy in his show uh, and then he goes and what was the basis of his <laughs> friendship with fred uh, that's had a really good point nothing in common well they she were makes a just good point. neighbors i guess yeah but really they did not have anything in common i mean ricky ricardo was like he, in a balky says they had music nothing music and what it's fred i know even but do? maybe they the wives became friends first in the building or something. I don't see those two hanging out. But, of course, the joke is he's confusing Ronaldo yeah. Ricardo for With Ricky Ricardo. Ricky Ricardo. Desi Arnaz. And Mrs. Dumont has gets annoyed and she has to explain that Ronaldo Ricardo is a world fame. Oh, also, this Mrs. Dumont has that, like, cliched, like, a rich woman oh, FX. draw yeah. or whatever. Yeah, can you do Ronaldo it? Ronaldo Ricardo is a world famous yes. artist. Yes. He's painted all the members of the royal family. Ooh. And when he finishes with this one. And then she walks over to, uh, to the right and there's an easel with a blue sheet covering it. And she uh, lifts, the lifts sheet it up and unveils this portrait of her. And she says it will hang in the portrait gallery of the Which, Chicago Art Institute. Yeah. Now, why? This, this lady just what? owns hotels. How, yeah. why, what, what, why is her portrait in the Art Institute next to like yeah. presidents and royal? What? What? Okay. Yeah. Like are the Hiltons in the portrait gallery? I don't know. Uh, it, I mean, it's a it's a nice painting. Also it's nice. But like whoever did but it, they never explained. I, they're just like trying to give us hints that she's something very she's prominent. She's rich but why? and important. Yeah. You never find out why. Larry and Balky walk over and Bal Larry's like, that's a beautiful painting. And Balky goes, Oh, cousin, this guy is really good. He steps up to the painting. Look, he goes, you can't even see any of the numbers. The, and then he starts he to scratch a, it. He thinks it's a paint by number. He thinks it's a paint. somebody did. And he, he starts, starts to scratch he, 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 the he, he goes to touch it, but he Larry no, stops it. It looked like he was scratching yeah. the painting for a second before Larry got over there. And Larry, you like. can't even see any of the numbers. Pulls him away. Oh, and uh, um, he tells Mrs. Dumont that they're not there for the painting about the painting. He says, we, this is again, like any self-respecting career journalist, would you be Listen, like, he goes, we're here to sell you a miracle product. A lot of this episode does not make a lick of sense. No sense. So he's like, Who's we're not writing the, this episode. We're not here about the painting. We are here to sell you a miracle product. And she's would like, be so embarrassed. She's like, What? So Larry picks up his briefcase and turns and puts it on the sofa. As, because I beg your pardon. As Balky steps behind him with that card uh, and just starts to read, Hello, busy homemaker. Like very we are here to make your house cleaning chores a joy and a pleasure. May we come in? And then he goes, get foot in door. <laughs> and Larry grabs the card out of Valky's hands and tears it up into pieces and then just like throws it on her living room floor. He just, just littered like, in her room. She, he's trying like, to sell her stuff. What are you stuff, doing? And he's just littering in front of her. And she's like, what is happening? Valky turns around and just goes, I'm telling El Bob <laughs> that he did that. And then, and then things got crazy as uh, Larry grabs Balky's hair and Balky grabs Larry's hair and they struggle and they turn and they bend over and then finally simultaneously come out of it and go hi, hi to Mrs. Dumont <laughs> uh, and Larry starts the pitch Mrs. Dumont we represent the clean for life home hygiene system we have over 200 varieties of cleaners and spot and stain removers Balky ba and he holds his hand out as if to he's expecting Balky to put a bottle of cleaner in there but instead of doing that Balky goes back to the well, spiel. The, 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 the script from the Hello, card, which is now been homemaker. worked up. Yeah. <laughs> we are here to make your house cleaning. Church. And Larry's like, give, give me. me the oh, yeah. Bottle. He thought when he said Balky, it was his cue to do the. Yeah. The so Balky, you'll notice Balky grabs a bottle and like twists the cap 
tightens it on and it's yeah. a blue bottle and it puts it in Larry's hand. Yeah. That's an important detail. And he tightens because the cap there's another unexplainable it. things happen later. So Larry continues with his, his part of the pitch. He says, it's as simple as shake and shine. And then he takes the bottle and he starts shaking it. And here's where we get an insight into his scheme. He says, I'm, I'm sure with three hotels, you use a lot of cleaning products. You, you personally, Lenora Dumont buys all the cleaning products for her three hotels. And as soon as she hears this, she's not having any of this. She's like, look, you'll have to excuse me. I don't, I don't have, have any time, time for, this. for any of then this. She goes, and please leave my house. She's just <laughs> kicking them out. See that? This lady is too rich and too busy. What are you guys doing? And Larry's like, wait, wait, you don't want to buy anything? And she goes, no. no. And Belky goes, Belky gets excited. Yes. He Why? hears that. He goes, no. Did you hear that, cousin? And then he runs over to like. He, he slaps her on the back, slap puts her on an the arm back. around her. And he goes, oh, boy, this is great. This this no means yes stuff is really starting to make sense to and me. And then he wraps his arms around her. And then he goes, when do we get our money? Get our money. Get our money. And squeezes her every time he says, get our money. And this lady is horrified. Oh, like, yeah. What is happening? And so Larry, again, has to run over and pull him away, bring him uh, from Mrs. Dumont. And and then he's like, if you could just, he's like pleading with her, if you just let us show you some of the products, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's opened his briefcase and he tries to put it on the coffee table. That's, there's a ton of, I don't know why there's a ton of stuff on. There's like food. He pushes a tray to make room and a whole tray of food falls all onto onto the the carpet. And you hear her yelp. She goes, ah! As the thing falls. And she goes, the maid will clean it up. And she turns to leave. And she goes, don't be here when I get back. <laughs> and she leaves, the, leaves room. the room. And Larry is dejected. And he just turns to Balky. He goes, Balky, let's get out of here. But Balky's like, no, we can We can go. We made this mess. We got to clean it up. So he has good intentions. He just wants yeah. to clean the mess. Suddenly, a light bulb goes off in Larry's head. You see it on his face. Yeah. And he's like, Balky, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> And then Bucky has a dumb joke. He goes, I can't take all the credit. You yourself said we were going to clean up in here. Uh, yeah, that's lame. He says, no, this is the perfect opportunity to show Mrs. Dumont how these cleaning products work. And so he's like, by the time she gets back, we will have this place spotless. And he's like, bring me the Omni Sweep. And he and so Balky goes to get the machine and then Larry goes, I think this calls for solvent number nine. <laughs> and he goes to the briefcase and you can see in the open briefcase, they're like different colors, sideways bottles of product there, right? strapped in. OK, OK. Yeah, so here he picks up a different bottle that's red liquid. Yeah. And he holds it up. He says, Balky, this will be as simple as shake and shine. But if you look carefully, the cap of the bottle is a uh, skew. Crooked. It's a skew. Now, which which means how would it possibly have been in that sideways saw orientation in the case? Tighten the cap of the last bottle he handed him. Yeah, are all these bottles just have the caps half Loose, on while he's carrying it? Because because he says this is as simple as shake and shine, and Balky immediately tries to interrupt and be like, "Cousin, just a second. Balky notices what we did, and yeah. we get that bit where he's like, uh, "I don't cousin, have, no, cousin, no, no, listen, listen, listen to me. Listen, I don't I have don't. time for this. You know, I don't have time, cousin." Just and he and he cuts him off. He says, "I met L. Bob Frederick. I read the book. I know what I'm doing." And Balky just goes, "Fine." Fine. <laughs> and he shakes the bottle, and of course, the cap flies off, and the liquid, the soap, flies behind him in like a big, like splash. They cut to a wide shot when he's shaking the bottle, and we can see that that blue cover has been put back on and we, the portrait. And, we, and in fact, some of the soap has. And the soap hit has hit that, that cover. White now, cover. when I was watching this, I was like, wait, when did that blue cover come back? I guess she put it back she right away. She put it away. back on. I we think it was off it. I was very screen. I was we like, wait a minute. It. When did this thing? Anyways, yeah, she the wouldn't leave it is, uncovered. No, right. Yeah. So he shook the bottle and he got the cover wet. Uh, we see that. He hasn't uh, seen that yet. So, and Larry just stands there and he's like, I suppose you were going to tell me to tighten the cap. And he goes, Yes, but perhaps that wasn't covered in, in the, the book. book. He's so salty. About this book. <laughs> he wants to read this book so badly. And then Larry turns around and he sees that the cover to the painting is wet. And he's like, Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> he says, I hope we didn't hurt it. And he gets a little panicky. And Balky says, Now, cousin, don't fly off your love handles. Ah, uh, don't fly, fly off, off the, the handles. handles. And then love handles. Yeah. Uh. 
they run to, in the direction of the painting, but Balky just looks around and he goes, oh, cousin, the wall is fine. <laughs> Lucky for us, the Ricardo painting was in the way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so they go oh. to the painting and Blair, he's freaking out. He doesn't want to ruin the painting. They each they- carefully take a side of the cover mm-hmm. and lift it off. And at first glance, the painting looks fine. Fine. There's nothing wrong. They and both like, sigh oh, in relief. That, thank goodness. That was that close. That was close. And Larry's like, okay, let's just clean up the carpet and get out of here. And Balky's looking at the painting and goes, uh, boy, Mr. Dumont must have had this little mold removed after the painting was done. And Larry's like, what Uh-oh, mold? What mold? And he's pointing to something and I, you don't even see. Like, there's nothing there, right? Yeah. There's nothing obvious. It's it's very, it's a very weak tight, writing. Yeah, here. it's a very tiny <laughs> speck. And Belky's like, oh, this little mole over here, right over to his nose. And Larry walks over. He goes, Belky, that's not a mole. It's a spot of cleaning fluid. Oh, and boy. And then he starts to panic. And he's and like, we... okay, all right. Don't panic. And of a- everything in this episode, <laughs> this, this, was the, this was the part that made me laugh out loud because he's he so frantic. His eyes are face. bugged out. He's like, classic that's like the larry that we know so he's like don't <laughs> panic and his face is so panicked he's like all right all right all right okay balky 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 and now things get ridiculous he's like all right all right all right all right i'll just i'll just and he picks up this little like a piece of cloth that yeah, was there by the, the paint easel. and he goes all right all right all right i'll just i'll just carefully remove the little speck of cleaning fluid and he carefully like has a corner of the cloth and he gently dabs it on the painting but <laughs> Uh, we're supposed to believe that it like smudges a big part of the nose. But of, clearly it looks like he there was paint on the thing. Yeah, and he just the put way they did it, they put on paint there. on it. But anyway, whatever they actually did, there's like now a smudge And then on he goes, oh God, nose. I just took off the end of her nose. And Malky's like, well, if you ask me, cousin, it looks a whole lot oh, better. Oh gosh. <laughs> and then Larry is freaking out. He's like, He's we, like, gotta, we fix gotta fix it. it. So apparently to the side, this whole time, the artist's, Painting tools have been sitting there because the Larry just left, just left it open. It's gonna dry out. Is this unless it's oil paint? Those never dry. Yeah. But Larry goes over and grabs the palette with paint and brush and goes to the painting like he knows how to paint. And he's like mixing. He's mixing paint on the palette. He's like, <laughs> like he's an artist. It's so funny. And he just starts painting over he's the st- nose <laughs> in like just splotches and making everything worse. At this point, I'm like, this is entirely unbelievable. If he's freaking out about ruining this rich lady's painting. So he's clearly making it And now he's making it worse. And and he really (laughs) thinks that's a good, like, that's going to work. Every brushstroke, you're going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What are you doing? But anyway, he's he's just doing random brushstrokes. And behind him, Balky's standing there going, okay, now articulate the cartilage. Articulate articulate the the cartilage. cartilage. He's like, get in there with some highlights. (laughs) He's like, now some shadow, some shadow. (laughs) So there's all these smudges on there. Oh, my gosh. What do you think? Balky goes, it stinks. (laughs) And he's like, okay. And then he's like, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, here. Here's what we're going to do. And he takes... An, a, another cloth he takes that cloth and he dabs at the nose again and this time makes like a much bigger so smear so it's now it's like an entire mess he looks like he's about to vomit right he's like, oh, God, God, was like oh I made it worse like he looks like he's gonna just his head's gonna explode yeah his facial expressions he's freaking out he's like what are we gonna do what are we gonna do what are we gonna do yeah and then Balky trying to be calm he goes cousin listen to me listen to me he steps in front of me and goes, I can paint, right? Larry goes, yes, you can. I can fix this, right? Larry goes, yes, you can. I can save us, right? And Larry's like, oh, thank, well, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. And then he goes, can I read the book? <laughs> and then finally, Larry's like, okay, all right. You, yes, you can read the book. And then Balky just pushes it. He goes, can I get an autographed copy? And, and Larry's like, just, just shut, shut up, up and, and fix, the, <laughs> fix the painting. <laughs> shut up and fix the painting. And Balky's like, okay. And so then he picks up from the easel another white cloth. And he's like, all right, now the first thing. This is pretty funny. First things first. (laughs) And it's supposed to be he's removing, clearing it, but he looks like he smears all this white paint over the face. So now her entire face is just a blank, like lighter colored paint. It's a big white splotch. So he's wiped away the whole face in (laughs) theory. And he turns, he picks up the brush and he goes, now. What did she look like? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> but the bit is so funny because you could tell there's paint on the yeah, rag already. But it's, but it's funny. And yeah. like there's just a big white splotch. And he goes, now, what did she look like? It doesn't have to wait long because. Uh, wait, Ms. and they must have had to do this in one take, too, unless they had multiple portrait paintings well, of yeah, her. Yeah, maybe. Or you could. I don't know if you could scrape this off. 
Anyway. Uh, anyways, yeah. just as she asks, what does it look like? Miss Dumont comes back into the room and just, and like, just screams, screams when she sees the And painting. her face is all distorted and she's got her hand to her mouth. And Malky's like, all right, all right. Now hold, hold it. it. Hold just it. Hold He's it. like, hold it. He's, He's like, hand like down, painting please. with the easel. Hand yeah. down, please. Or Give me a little smile. The and then she to- tweaks her mouth a little bit. And then he just proceeds to take some paint. He's like, hold it just like that. And then he just draws a red smiley face on that white splotch. He doesn't even put eyes. No, it's just, just a the smile. Mouth mouth of a so smiley face. Ridiculous. So ridiculous. So ridiculous. So then we're just left to imagine how the rest of that plays out because we cut to the final scene and they're back in their own home, in their own living it's room. It's nighttime and they're both, it's very odd because they're both wearing white tuxedo shirts and bow ties bow and ties. black pants and they both have their right leg up on a coffee table and they're both holding one end of this rag and they're, they are proceeding they're like shining to shining both, both of their, their shoes. shoes with one rag. Yeah. Back in unison. Forth, in yeah. unison. What is happening? Yeah, and it's nighttime, and uh, we're in the middle of a conversation here, and Larry says, did Mama get the birthday present you sent her? And Becky's like, yep, she loved her Clean for Life products. So, okay, so they sent all the cleaning products to Mama. So you got to imagine he had present. to buy all that stuff, and he was stuck with it. Yeah. And so, okay, so they gifted that to and Mama. And he says, she has the cleanest mud hut on the island. Mama Bartogamus gets yeah. cleaning products. And then they together take their right foot, <laughs> down from the legs. table and put their leg left foot up and start shining that shoe and uh, Larry's like alright we gotta go we don't wanna be late for Mrs. Dumont's party oh they got invited to a party and that's they, amazing I they, did not expect that uh, outcome maybe cause then they go to the closet and they pull out these like little waist length red jackets <laughs> and we're like okay so they're doing something they look like almost caterers or something Larry's like, she really was pretty understanding, wasn't she? Jackie's like, yeah, yeah, she was. And I really hope tonight's party doesn't go very late. And Larry's like, oh, but just think of it this way. Uh, Only another six more months of parking cars and we'll have paid off the carpet and the painting. Oh, and then they start to leave. So they're parking cars at her party. So they're Dumont to pay back the damage they did to the carpet and the painting. But but they're still at a net loss for the products that they bought. Hey, you can't win them all. Roll credits. Roll credits. And also, do we never acknowledge the embarrassment of like he was a reporter interviewing her? Okay, wait, wait, wait for your thoughts. I got to let the listener know to check out our tea public shop oh, and yes. get some Dance of Joy swag, merchandise, t shirts, hoodies, cell phone cases, coffee mugs. It's a way you can support the show and promote the show. We'd love your help. Getting the word out there. Lots of fun stuff. If you buy something, take a picture. Send it in. Okay. Before we get to all of the nonsense. Mrs. Lenora Dumont was played by actress Marge Doucet. She is a huge soap opera actor. She was in Santa Barbara, Days of Our Lives, All My Children, Guiding Light. Uh, She was on Facts of Life. Mm. Remember Blair? Yes. She played her mother. Oh. Monica on the facts okay. of life. She's also been on Get Smart, Star Trek, The Wild Wild West, Bonanza, Hawaii Five O, Hogan's Heroes, The Mod Squad, The Odd Couple, Can and Mannix, The Streets of San Francisco, The Bionic Woman, Barnaby Jones, Quincy Emmy, Square Pegs, Heart to Heart, E slash R, not E R. That's a different show. <laughs> Dallas in the Heat of the Night, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and Murder She Wrote. Marge Doucet has been everywhere. I think she has uh, a lot of people would have recognized her back then. Yeah, she probably always played the same kind of yeah, character. Yeah, you can absolutely see her with on that, the soap like, opera. rich yes. lady affect. Um, yes. Well, what was the point of any of this? What was the point what of What were you this? saying about the embarrassment of... Wouldn't Marge like, call... How do we ne- I mean, wouldn't Dumont call Larry's boss and be like... How, how do they never come back over acknowledge... Or the Sony like, stuff his integrity here and for someone who's so into his career like he has no problem a like trying to sell her products and then like he went from interviewing her for the newspaper to like parking cars for her party Listen, you, if you want to get rich all integrity goes out the window that's how you get rich that's all it's Larry so knows. weird what was the point of I was trying to think what what was the point of this episode like you know how sometimes we say the the writers might have had like a good idea for a gag and then built the story around that or like some they just wanted to do this one thing. They wanted to have a horse in the apartment. Let's build a story around that, whatever. But like what 
was this for? These two, I, I'm not sure. Maybe so they can afford that giant house they live in. They but they didn't to, say that at no, all. No, no. Balky's just I, trying I to I just send implied mama. that. But the, yeah, Balky wanted to buy his mama a present. Larry probably just got, su- like I said, he got suckered into some a- MLM scheme, scheme. Uh, and thought that this was going to be the greatest thing ever. Uh, I and don't like, know. I don't know. I'm so, not sure. yeah, I mean, I don't think the, um, there weren't any particularly hilarious, like, dialogue lines or jokes or gags. The painting part was the, the painting part, part was really funny because when they're putting on the paint, it's hilarious. But and it's so frantic ridiculous. Frantic Larry is funny, yes, but yeah, it's like is... so ridiculous that that's why it's funny. So the valet bit reminded me of, and there's a story, uh, a new story about, about the scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Remember Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Yes. Where they they park the car with the valets. Yes. And then when they get it, all these miles are on there. Yes. They got to roll it back. Yes. They are making a spinoff movie. Ooh. Set during that day about the two valet the valets guys. who took the car yes. for a joyride, right? and it's going to happen during that movie. What's and it's it a, called? So David, oh, this was the story. David, they have a director. David Katzenberg is going to direct the spinoff called Sam and Victor's Day Off. Sam and Victor were the two valets. Oh, nice. So I, because there was a lot of miles in 1986 that was going to happen. It's going to take place in 86. There was a lot of miles on that car when they got it. So I would always wondered what, where what did they did go? They do? What did they do? Now we're going to find out. With the Ferrari. It was a Ferrari. Are they going to be the same two actors? No, no. no you got to recast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to recast. It'll probably be I will, somebody. We I want to watch that. Anyways, not the greatest episode. Pretty filler. What did our listeners think? First up, we have. Listener cousin Pam Hitchcock, who writes, The most unbelievable part of this episode is that an owner of three hotels had her portrait painted by a world-renowned artist. Does it? Did they say specifically three hotels? Yeah. He said, you own three hotels. Oh, three. I guess 91, three was a lot of hotels to own. I don't know. The most unbelievable part of this episode is that an owner of three hotels had her portrait painted by a world-renowned artist and is going to... And it's going to hang in a nationally known art museum. That's one yeah. of the most unbelievable parts. There was one a lot of, of unbelievable there was a lot. parts. Then she also writes, despite Larry's penchant to forget rich quick schemes, this door-to-door salesman thing seems to have come out of left field. <laughs> That's what I yeah. thought in the beginning. As soon as he, you're like, come on, you're an investigative reporter. Surely you would recognize uh, like a like a pyramid scheme. It doesn't make sense. Business or do some research or you know, like look, ask around about them. Although, although it could have been a legitimate business. We actually never really, they never really hinted that the business itself was a scam. They just failed at selling. You know what I mean? We're just assuming that, but anyway, they're just bad salesmen. Still, still. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was the point. So like they didn't even lean into the funny parts about a pyramid scheme. It was just that they were bad salesmen. We don't know it was a pyramid scheme, like you said. I know. We're just assuming. Could have been. Anyway, okay. Back to Cousin Pam, who uh, who says, I thought we were going to get a funny bit with the yes, no thing, but it fell flat and was nearly as confusing to me as it was yeah. to Balky. Correct. No means yes. Yes. There was no reason for Larry to think that Lenora Dumont would see a clean floor and think the products he used cleaned it. She would have assumed the maid did the job after I had that thought, too. His friend was like, we're going to clean up, and then she'll be so impressed. How's she going to know? You cleaned it up. You would tell them, obviously. You're not thinking. No. Why? She left. She told him to get out. Um... More notes from Cousin Pam. A conveniently placed color palette, paint palette. Oh, yeah. We need it to base the episode around. Yeah. Yes. Marge Doucet, who played Lenora, was well known for soap opera roles in which she played similar snooty characters. There, there that, that was yeah. my hunch. Uh, she writes, I liked the ending where the guys had to work as valets and, and Mama got the cleaning product as a gift. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all I liked. Nine Baba Stickies. Nine Baba Stickies. All right. And then we have, yeah, that's pretty low on her scale. Then we have cousin Nicole Stoner who writes, hold up. Didn't the cousins do business together in past episodes? Yes, they did. Like buying Meepos. I think you mean selling, trying to sell Meepos. Yeah. Or flipping houses. Yep. Didn't Balky barter with that customer to make a sale in the pilot? Yep. Why would Larry not want Balky to read the book about selling? Unclear. So he could be in control. That's what we thought. Because it's not 
by the book? I don't know. I don't know. None of this makes sense, but those are all good all questions. Good questions. All good unanswerable questions. This was a pretty I mean the painting gag was funny and maybe that's the original spark and they wrote around it. I don't I can't really figure out how this episode yeah, idea why originated. the teddy bears in the beginning. Why the teddy bears like, there weren't comes, even any funny lines about the and teddy like bears. Like the bears are gone later when they come back. I don't I don't don't be ridiculous. And where are the girls? <laughs> They're on a, they're on a flight. Oh, yeah, they're, they're on working. a flight. You can write that. Doesn't matter. You can write that. Don't be ridiculous. Not said. Of course, I have. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> but we can report Dimitri's portrait is on the mantle of the fireplace. Okay, where is the Dimitri intern? There are literally stuffed animals, stuffed bears. You couldn't have put a Dimitri in, 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 in there next to him, the or like Dimitri with a little stuff or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, we need. Why? I'm so. I really want to know the background behind this Dimitri portrait or, that showed up at some point, and we don't ever see the. Dalky should have be making stuff Dimitris to sell. That would have been a yep. good scheme. Yep. Like if you did that now, that's what you do on Etsy. Yep. Speaking of doing things now, now it's time to discuss Perfect Strangers today, which is the segment of this podcast where we discuss. If this episode could be remade today and what issues would arise or not arise. So this is one of those cases where I'm going to say, just don't do this. Just, I, is it even worth thinking about? Well, I mean, we don't even have door to door sales and we have Etsy shops. We have, well, it would be, it would be like we were talking in the beginning, like those drop shipping schemes yeah. or selling stuff on Etsy scheme, to make yeah. rich quick or passive income that they do now. It would be uh, all digital. Cryptocurrency. It might, yeah. Larry, oh my God. Larry, Larry would be, be like, a crypto bro. Bucky, have you heard of NFTs? <laughs> we're going to make millions. And Valky would make, would make some weird NFTs. pun about fung- fungible. Yes. Why are those tokens fungible, cousin? They put the fun in fungible. I don't see any mushrooms in there, cousin. I don't want their fungus <laughs> or something dumb like I, that. Okay. Okay. I take it back. It might be funny if you do a whole NF thing with Balky not NF. understanding. I mean, regular people don't understand what NFTs are. You wouldn't you have, have the painting. How would you mess up a painting? Oh, yes. You would that. mess up an NFT. Yes. But you can't mess up an NFT. Would you? Could he digitally like... No. Yeah. Or you spill water on a computer and the NFT's gone or something. I no, it's a stretch. I would say pass on this. Pretty low. Perfect strangers today. <laughs> I mean, it's like score. the whole thing is a filler uh, episode. Yeah. It has nothing to do with anything. It's just like random things. Yeah. It didn't serve any purpose. And it's not like they're doing a of, new thing because they've had these get right. rich schemes in the past. Oh, we're going to start seeing some repeat yep, premises right. as repeat. well. So, um, yeah, if you're going to do it, don't do it. <laughs> don't do That's it. All I could say. Why? There's no door to door. Nobody goes knocks on doors anymore. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I did. I, yeah. I remember I had, I signed up once when I was like a teenager to sell knives door to door. Did you? Did you sell any? No, I went to one door and I was like, I'm not doing this. You went to a training and everything? I think I did. You must have. Yeah, but I think I was like, 16 or 17. Oh my god, how awkward a for a 16 year old. Like, yeah, and then I it, do not remember that you did that. And then I also I worked at a call center for like one day, one day, and I was like, nope, where I can't do it. it was it was like where we lived in Lincolnwood. It was actually down the street like on Lincoln Bell Avenue. And Howell? No, it was oh. like, it was down oh, in the, on Lincoln. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was like walking distance. And I did it one day and I was like, no, when was that? No. I don't remember that I, at all. I was during my teenage years. I remember you worked at. Bask, uh, Baskin, Baskin Robbins, Robbins during the, ice the cream. heat wave of like that, 1995, and that, they shut down the shop because, yeah, because the ice, ice cream, cream was melted. melting inside in the freezer. I remember it that. was the, that heat wave that like killed like a bunch of people, old people. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've had that, but never. I didn't know what the knives and the. I remember doing trying to do door to door knives, center. and but like both of those, like no, no, yeah, those are you can't. It's not fun. I did Oof. not enjoy that. I'm like nope. Nope, I thought I'd try it out. It's not easy money. It nope. never works. Nope. So anyways, that's it for this week. Next week, so last week, we teased the wrong episode because things got out of order, whatever. This time next week, we will uh, see King Larry, maybe. King Larry, maybe. Uh, Meposian people come to visit. Larry Ooh, may be crowned royalty. At least that's got some like yes. reason to happen. It's tied in. This episode had no reason. But th- this episode is because they need 24 episodes in a season. Mm. And uh, this is what this one was to say. 
Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, you can another way to support the show, listener, is to buy us a virtual coffee. Visit our website. There's a buy us a coffee button there. Click it. Donate some dig does. Uh, we would appreciate it. All the support goes back into the show. Thank you for the support. You should all visit us on our website. What is it? Danceofjoypod.com. And from there, you can leave us a voice message. You can send us an email at danceofjoypod at gmail.com. You can also go from that website to all the various uh, links where you can find this podcast to stream and to like and rate and review and subscribe to. Please do all of those things. Uh, the attention really helps a lot and it just feels good. <laughs> You can also find us on our social media accounts. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love to hear from you all. Tell us about your door-to-door sales uh, experiences if you have been around for that long, (laughs) as we have. Uh, Tell us if you are good at it. And if no really means yes, I don't know. What was that like? Let us know on any of our social media sites or send us an email or a voice message from the website. Just please come and spend some time with us in the ether on the onlines. But Imran, what is the most important thing our listeners should do? Always use paint thinner when correcting a painting, not actual paint. It'll be a lot easier to clean up later. (laughs) When you're smearing paint on. Always tighten the cap before you shake. That was going to be the other one. Always make sure the cap is tightened before you shake and shine. No, the most important thing is to share, share. the show. Uh, send, tell your valet about it next time you go to a fancy party. Tell party your party. rich uh, three hotel owning <laughs> neighbor about Go door to door and spread the dance of joy yes. gospel to your neighbors. Door to door dance door-to-door of joy. Door to door podcast sharing. Just be like, hey, subscribe to this and then run to the next door. Ding dong. Yes. Knock knock. Who's there? Share the show with a friend. Word of mouth goes a long way. It really helps us out. Uh, and we will appreciate you forever. That's our show for this week. Uh, now we are somewhat happy. Now we are so happy. We do the dance of joy. Hey, 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 hey,